Types of Chemical Reactions, Single and Double Displacement Reactions. Okay, so what we want to do today is learn how to recognize certain types of chemical reactions. And so in this case, it's going to be single replacement reactions and double replacement reactions. And we're also going to learn how to pre predict the products for these types of reactions. All right, so let's talk about single replacement first. And basically, this is a chemical reaction in which one element is substituted for another element in a compound. And after we do that, we're going to end up with a new element and also a new compound. So let's look at this example here. So here we have hydrogen chloride and zinc metal. Okay, so when you see a metal with solid, that means it's in metal form. It's, you know, a non-oxidized state. And so what we're going to do is swap out partners. So hydrogen is now going to be the new element. Okay, and a lot of times it's easier to think about pairing the metal with the anion in the other compound. So now we're going to have zinc chloride. So zinc chloride and then hydrogen. Now, um, in this case, we're going to have zinc 2 plus and then chloride anions are minus one each. So we have, so we have two of those paired with that zinc uh, cation and then hydrogen gas. That is our new element. So here's our new compound, and here is our new element. Okay, so let's look at another example. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to trade partners. So here's our element first. So that's fluorine. Here's our compound, sodium chloride. So what we're going to do is we're going to take sodium cation, and instead of having a chloride anion, now we're going to have a fluoride anion. So now we're going to have sodium fluoride, and then we're going to have chlorine gas. Okay, so new element. So old element, new element, old compound, new compound. And so practice doing this little switcheroo. Um, and basically, a typical characteristic of these types of reactions is that there's one element as a reactant as a, and another element as a product. So on each side of the equation, there is an, there's basically an elemental form of a substance. Okay, now let's talk about whether a certain single replacement reaction will actually proceed. And not all of them will. And so uh, there's a few simple rules that we can use. We're only going to look at one of them, and that is with the halogens. So the halogens are on the periodic table, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, they're in that uh, group 17, so right by the noble gases. And um, they include fluorine. Remember, they all exist as diatomics. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And they're, as I mentioned, they're found in the next to last column on the periodic table. Um, now the elements on the top of the column will replace the elements below them, but it doesn't work the other way around. And so we're going to be able to predict whether a certain reaction will go based on the placement of that halogen on the periodic table. So let's take a look at that periodic table now. So here we can see we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And these, these are the guys we're going to work with. Now, fluorine will replace anything below it. Iodine won't replace anything. Okay? So fluorine will replace chlorine, bromine, iodine. Chlorine will not replace fluorine, but it will replace bromine and iodine. Bromine will not replace chlorine or fluorine, but it will replace iodine. So just get used to thinking about that. And let's look at some reactions. Now, this particular reaction will occur. So what we have is calcium iodide and we have chlorine gas. And chlorine is above iodine on the periodic table. So we're going to get calcium chloride and iodine solid. So this is our elemental form. So notice this has the characteristic single displacement reaction. So we have compound, new compound, element, new element. Now, um, the, this reaction actually won't go. So think about why not. So we're, we have calcium fluoride, but we're trying to replace it with bromine. Bromine is below fluoride on the periodic table, and so this reaction actually will not proceed. All right, so let's look at these other examples. 
So decide whether the certain single replacement reaction will occur. If so, predict the products. Now, even if the reaction won't occur, if you want to predict the products, it's just extra practice. But just realize that it will not occur. So take a second and, um, and write out the reactions, and then we'll check your answers. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Magnesium chloride. So chlorine is above iodine on the periodic table. So this reaction actually isn't going to go. It's just going to sit there and look at you. Okay, um, and so, so that's pretty, pretty easily dispatched. If it was going to go, we'd have magnesium iodide, and then we would have chlorine as the new element over here. But again, this reaction will not go because iodine won't uh, substitute for chlorine in the reaction. All right, so what about the next one? So we have calcium bromide, and we are reacting it with fluorine. Now, fluorine is above bromine on the periodic table, so that means that this reaction is actually going to go. So we're going to have calcium bromide reacting with fluoride and fluorine, and then we're going to get calcium fluoride and bromine as our products. Okay, now we've talked about single displacement reactions, so now let's just get a quick introduction to double displacement reactions. Now we're going to actually come back to these with precipitation reactions also, but let's just look at them simply right now. And so basically, a double displacement reaction is a reaction where parts of two ionic compounds are exchanged, and we're going to make two new compounds. So we'll have two compounds on the reactant side, and we're going to have two new compounds on the product side. And, um, and that is basically a, a, a characteristic that makes it easy to identify double replacement reactions. So let's look at an example. So here we have copper chloride and silver nitrate. And after we perform our reaction, we're going to swap out. Now we can look at this either from cations or anions, and you want to make sure that you always pair a cation with an anion. So remember, cations are positively charged. They're going to be attracted to anions, but they're not going to be attracted to other cations. So when we do the switcheroo, we have to make sure that we're switching um, uh, so let's take this copper cation and put it with the other anion. So copper is now going to be in a compound with nitrate. So see that there, okay? And then silver is going to be in a compound with the chlorine or the chloride. And so we'll get that compound. So you can see we have, so we have two compounds on the reactant side, two new compounds on the product side. Now, I want to say a little bit about writing out these formulas because it may not be completely obvious. So, how do we know the charge on this copper ion? So, it, in this case, we know it's 2 plus. How do we know that? Well, if we look here, we see that chloride, there's two of them. Each chloride is minus 1. We need to balance the charge, so that means copper has to be 2 plus. Now, if we remember our polyatomic ions, nitrate is minus 1, okay? So when we write our new copper nitrate, copper is still 2 plus, but we need two nitrates in order to uh, balance that charge, okay? So remember, the polyatomic goes in the parentheses, and the subscript 2 outside the parentheses tells us how many of that polyatomic there are. Now, let's go to silver. Again, we know that nitrate is minus 1. Silver is plus 1. And we know that because these charges have to balance. Um, so when we write out silver chloride, chloride is minus 1. Silver is plus 1. So this compound is completely charge balanced. This is correctly written. And then finally, notice how we had to balance the equation. We need two nitrate polyatomics. We need two silver cations. So here's our two nitrates, and here are our two silver cations. Okay, we already had two chloride anions. We already had, um, and we already had uh, two silvers. Actually, we already had two nitrates. But um, so let's, so anyway, so make sure that you've charge balanced each of the compounds 
the formulas that you write out for the ionic compounds and then also make sure you balance it at the end. So as I mentioned, just make sure that you're switching either, you know, you can either look at it from the, ca an the cation side, so switch cation for the new anion or you're looking at the anions and, and then switching a uh, cation for a new cation. But don't switch both, you're going to end up with the same thing. Um, and also, of course, don't put uh, positive and positive together, cation with cation or anion with anion. All right, so let's practice this. So pause the video and write out the products of this double replacement equation. Be sure to balance it too. Okay, so we can switch either the cations or the anions, and when we do that, we're going to get barium sulfate and sodium chloride. Okay, so let's look at this. So barium is going to get a new anion, and that's barium sulfate, and that's right here. Okay, and sodium is going to get a new anion, and that's going to be sodium chloride. Okay, now notice Sodium plus one, chloride minus one. All right, so that's balanced. Sodium uh, sulfate, uh, polyatomic, is minus two. Barium is in the second column, group two on the periodic table, so it's plus two. Um, so this is balanced, but we do not have the atoms balanced. So notice this isn't written as a chemical equation yet because we don't have a balanced equation. So now let's go ahead and write it out as a chemical equation and then let's balance it. So the first thing I want to point out, just these are just a few other little hints. So notice that we have sodium and there's two of them and chloride and there's two of them. Now, we do not write sodium to chloride two, okay? This is not the lowest ratio of elements in the compound. So this is completely incorrect and it will be marked wrong. So you want to go with the lowest ratio, so you divide by two and you're going to get sodium chloride. Now, that does create a problem because we have two sodiums on this side and only one sodium on this side, two chlorides on this side and only one chloride on that side. But remember, we can fix that with a coefficient. So we put a two in front of sodium chloride and now we have two chlorides and two sodiums and the equation is correctly balanced. The other thing I just want to point out that if you have memorized as your, your polyatomics as directed, then you can balance your polyatomics as a group. And so that's really nice too. So we already know that sulfur and oxygen are balanced on both sides of the equation because we have our polyatomics balanced. All right, so single replacement reactions replace one element for another in a compound a double replacement reaction exchanges the cations or the anions of two ionic compounds. So we start with two ionic compounds, we end up with two different ones. Uh, you wanna practice writing these a lot. Um, it actually gets much easier the more you do it. After a while, it'll just be automatic for you. 